The following is a left vats pneumonectomy performed at the Cleveland Clinic by Dr. Daniel Raymond. The patient is a 67-year-old female never smoker who presented with recurrent upper respiratory tract infections requiring repeated hospitalizations. A bronchoscopy performed in an outside hospital revealed a, an obstructive distal left main stem mass. She was transferred to the Cleveland Clinic for further evaluation. In retrospect, the mass was seen on scans for several years. A CT scan reveals an obstructive mass at the distal left main stem bifurcation, leading to obstructive atelectasis of the upper lobe. In hindsight, one can see suggestion of this mass dating back five years on a prior CT. Bronchoscopy performed at the Cleveland Clinic again revealed an obstructing distal left main stem mass. An aggressive debridement was performed, revealing ultimately a typical carcinoid neoplasm, and a bronchial ultrasound assessment of the paratracheal lymph nodes revealed no evidence of neoplasm. Notably, there is extension of tumor down both the upper and lower lobe segmental bronchi with in direct involvement of the secondary carina, thus making a sleeve resection not possible. Additional evaluation revealed an FEV1 of 1.05, which was 49% predicted, and a DLCO of 13.98, which was 70% predicted. Quantitative perfusion scan revealed only 10% perfusion to the left lung. Stress echocardiogram revealed the fixed defect in the inferior wall with no inducible ischemia and a normal EF. An ultimate decision was made to proceed with left pneumonectomy. The case is performed with general endotracheal anesthesia and a right-sided double lumen tube. No epidural is utilized due to a planned VATS approach. The larger red arrow indicates the location of the camera port from which most vantage points of the remaining case will be seen from. The smaller green line, more cephalad, represents a fourth interspace working port, which will have a wound protector placed through it. The smaller blue arrow, inferiorly, is the second working port, which is roughly even with the camera port posterior infrascapular line. The case has begun with a camera port in the posterior axillary line, roughly eighth interspace. We are now obtaining the second, more lateral port in the infrascapular line. We are now placing the fourth interspace working port in the posterior axillary line directly superior to the camera port. One can see adhesions from the chronically atelectatic and um, infected upper lobe uh, due to the chronic obstruction. Once a soft tissue retractor has been placed in the anterior superior working port, we begin a fairly tedious uh, dissection of the anterior and medial adhesions. This is done with mostly sharp dissection with bovielectric cautery to obtain hemostasis. We then proceed to mobilize the lung off of the mediastinum. This is done with sharp and blunt dissection and bovielectric cautery, taking care to preserve the phrenic nerve, which can be easily visualized on the pericardium coming through the center of the screen. Subsequently, we bring up the inferior pulmonary ligament. The lung is now reflected anteriorly. We are taking down adhesions posteriorly between the lung and the aorta and dividing the pleural reflection posteriorly. During this process, we are preserving the vagus nerve. With further dissection inferiorly, we are able to completely circumferentially isolate the inferior pulmonary vein. Subsequently, we circumferentially isolate the superior pulmonary vein. It is then divided with an endo-GI stapler.
Next, we circumferentially isolate out the left main pulmonary artery. I place a POTS vessel loop around the artery to assist in placement of an endo-GI stapler. The POTS vessel loop is subsequently removed and the artery is divided. At this point, one can see the stump of the pulmonary artery at the top of the screen with the aortic arch more distal. The inferior pulmonary vein is visible and has yet to be divided, as does the bronchus. We are now bringing in the endo-GI stapler to divide the inferior pulmonary vein. This can generally be done from the anterior working port with a reticulated stapler. After additional dissection is performed in the hilum to isolate the left main stem bronchus, we encircle the left main stem bronchus with an endo-GI stapler. The stapler is placed through the posterior inferior port. The retraction is provided by the a sponge stick through the working port anteriorly. We try to retract the airway as far as possible in order to minimize the length of the stump care has to be taken to avoid injuring the recurrent laryngeal nerve during this process. The specimen is removed with a large endocatch bag through the anterior working port. We rarely have to enlarge the incision to accommodate the lung as it is quite deformable. I do tend to divide the intercostal muscle a little further into the chest when I create this working port to allow more compliance of the chest wall. Thank you for watching our video.